Yeah, it's a little short. You want to do another interview or no? The interview? Which interview is that? Well, we did one in Vail. Did we? Yep. You talked about dubes. What did I talk about dubes? I don't smoke dubes. I'm not into that hippie shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I don't know, man. We had a pretty hard drinking night after that. After we were leaving here, we went back to the Michigan crew. Are I you just, serious? Yeah, and then stole. I don't think he left until like 3 o'clock or something like that. Look where? The bar? The, the hotel. Yeah. yeah. I, I, there was some heavy drinking, though. We got kicked out of one hotel room, and then uh, so we ended up doing another hotel room and drank there for another hour and a half. I saw the little girls wanting to sleep, and we were trying to sleep uh, at the very door. Oh, cool, that's awesome. I didn't even notice the intercom. Yeah, what the hell, right? <laughs> that's their job to tell us otherwise. Well, what we do with the information is up to us. That's it. That's it. That's it. Sound too bad, right? Anything's <laughs> possible, right? Make sure it's you don't undo that little guy. Yeah, that'll be all right. Yeah. I won't trip and fall the uh, bike. We know who you are. We know we we're hands in each pocket. other's pockets. So. Yeah, there you go. You got to figure it out after that. My back pocket. How about my hand in his pocket? That's right. Is that, is that what you think? That's no right. Don't pictures. You'll be happy to know. That's right. We don't do the bike. I don't think you can blackmail out of many. Yeah, right. His his uh his front looking good. Yeah, nice smiles, nice. I'll give you fifty dollars to push him in, Nero. No. <laughs> I'll give you sixty. <laughs> I do it that one once. <laughs> sixty going twice. Coke transaction. transaction <laughs> Here come the cops. Not all right. Oh, buying Pepsi. Oh, they coming by quick. Okay. Do they even make RC anymore?
And a six pack. I believe in labels. But it's supposed to be. It's kind of like, um, you know, kind of like diversity day at the office. Diversity day at the office? Diversity day. I don't know. Uh, the first season of the office where we had everyone on there. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Can we get Marcy and Alex? Because I'm going to be able to play with them. Hi, I'm extra close this morning. Let's just do one of me and Grandpa. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think I'm going to be able to play with them. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So you can frame the window. Oh yeah, dude. No big deal, right?
again, Mr. and Mrs. Martin. And at this time, I'd like to invite Rachel's grandfather to please join her on the dance floor. I'd like to invite Martin to please escort his mother to the dance floor. Everybody to please find their seat. 
it's kind of ironic that we're back here in Canandaigua. This is actually a great childhood memory to me. We spent many summers out here. Uh, I was invited every year at the Womps. Marilyn was like a second mother to me. Uh, men, remember Martin and I and his dad, Paul, played many night, late night poker games. <laughs> we'd then take our winnings the next day. We'd go down to the store, which we'd walk. It seemed like two miles, but it was probably half a mile. And uh, we'd buy candy. Uh, lighters, that was a kind of a thing back then, any guys that we could find, and then an occasional shaving cream. And it's not that we could shave, but we like to have shaving cream wars in the afternoons. So, we also had many uh, swimming adventures. We used to tie our fireworks with strings and sink them with rocks and explode them underwater. We uh, we just swimming, it didn't matter if it was raining or if it was cold, it didn't bother us. We, we lived in the water. So many, many great times here, many memories over the years. As a child, Martin and I were very adventuresome. We liked to uh, reenact uh, Indiana Jones, MacGyver, um, James Bond, I guess you could say. Yeah, whatever we could do. We spent uh, countless hours in the woods. We'd go swimming in swamps, something I wouldn't let my daughter do nowadays, but back then it was okay. And uh, we used to have to get hosed off afterwards. We were so dirty. So we had many great memories growing up as a child. Um, as a teenager, uh, we got you know lots of great trips, memories, spring break. Uh, we go golfing together, ski trips, skiing, right here at Bristol Mountain. Um, we'd sometimes just detail our cars. One thing that we would never miss was our weekly uh, Applebee dinners, chicken wings. Yeah, yeah, and they were one of the, the best wings around, so we made sure we made time for that every year, or every week, I'm sorry. Then as we got older, it happened in 1995, the year we graduated from high school, uh, my father got relocated to Houston, Texas. So I went down with the family, went to college in Texas, and uh, me and Mark were separated. We uh, stayed in touch over the years, um, and who, who would figure that many years later we'd be back in touch. About two years ago, Mark relocated back to Texas, or relocated, I'm sorry, himself to Texas, um, and he is a true Texan. If you haven't noticed by the broomstake, this is a Texan here. I'm actually surprised he's not wearing cowboy boots tonight. I think Rachel had something to do with that, probably. <laughs> but you never know, the night's young, so. Yeah, there you go. Uh, in Texas, we have a saying that uh, I wasn't born in Texas, but I got here as fast as I could. <laughs> stickers, along with the many others you might have heard. And we're very proud people. And Martin uh, and Rachel both really ex ex just exemplify that aspect of, of true Texans. Rachel graduated from Texas A&M. And, uh, yeah, and born in Texas, that's right. So, they're true Texans at heart. So, it's just been great that, ironically, in such a big state, in the big city of Houston, that me and Martin work only two buildings away from each other. So we see each other quite a bit. And it's just amazing, after all these years, it was kind of God's plan that we'd be back together. And it was God's plan that he'd meet such a beautiful bride, Rachel. Aww. So with that said, I'd like to uh, raise our glasses to a toast. To Martin and Rachel, many more years to come, many great times ahead. I love you guys. And one last thing is, you know, Martin and Rachel are very social. They want to make sure that, that everyone has a great time tonight. So please uh, have fun and enjoy yourselves. This is uh, kind of the, the way they are. They like to share everything with friends. So we're glad you're all here. Thank you.
question. Sorry, I don't want to stand with my back to people, but uh, there are not many people, my name's Neeral Shah, there are not many people that can say they're an older friend of Martin and Matt Tallinger, but I'll, I'll tell you, I moved in, my parents moved in when I, I was three across the street from Martin, and we've been best friends ever since, and it's been... Um, a pretty incredible ride. So if I could, I have a lot of memories with Martin, um, but if I could tell you that, you know, being a son to an immigrant family that moved in across the street from Martin, Martin basically uh, taught me the American <laughs> way. And it was, and it's okay. been a great ride. <laughs> uh, so with all those memories, let me indulge you with one. Imagine two young boys, uh, seven years old, with my older brother, nine years old, looking through a Boy's Life magazine, thinking to ourselves, wow, they were advertising a grenade launcher. We could make that. You know, and I said to Marty, you know, do you think we could do that? And he's like, yeah, of course we can. You know, I, and then he said, you know, we don't need the directions, no stinking directions. You know, we'll do it on our own. One thing led to another. We substituted a couple things here and there, and instead of whatever they had for fuel, he's like, you know, I know something flammable, we can use gasoline. <laughs> so, well, we went back out in the field. If you've ever been to Marty's house on Pond View, you know there's a big field in the back, and um, I don't think you were home, so this is probably a new story for you, too. Uh, uh, so we went in the back, lit up our grenade launcher, and waited for the tennis ball to come out. It never came out. <laughs> Caught on fire. Big fire. <laughs> So, my brother and I are freaking out, right? I mean, I don't know what my mom's gonna say, but we are freaking out. And co Marty, calm and collect, turns to us, guys, we can put this fire out, no problem. <laughs> Big fire. <laughs> so, anyways, we, we end up putting out the fire, but I'll tell you that this brought out three of the qualities that I really admire in Martin. One, how calm he is and how even-headed he is all the time, all the time. What a loyal friend he is. Never went back, never muttered a word. My mom never found out to this day. Unless any of you tell her, she will never find out. And just for being such a good friend, so loyal, and just a leader. I mean, he, he really took us and he's like, yeah, we can do this on our own. So these qualities, I think, I would have to say that they've only been enhanced since the time he met Rachel. And I think the first time I met them, you know, when he and Rachel came and visited me, whether it was in Boston or D.C. or Charlottesville, I mean, they are a traveling crew and they drive anywhere. They'll travel to the end of the world to see you. And, um, you know, whether it was those memories we had in the past or memories in the future, whether it be watching John Wayne movies and Clint Eastwood movies with your dad, and or using your mom's dental floss to make a booby trap in the Guyver style with a sleepover, or picking on your baby sister, not so baby anymore, you know. And so, <laughs> and um, you know, there are a lot of memories ahead, and and thank you, Rachel, for entering into them and being a part of them. And maybe we'll get together, and our kids will make a grenade launcher someday. Okay. So if you could please raise your glasses to Martin and Rachel. <laughs> So, so thank you. Congratulations, guys. And right now, I'd like to turn these over to Mr. Mark Wan. Oh. Yeah. Doctor! Here comes drama here. And I want to wish Rachel into the Wong family. On his behalf, everything's going to be fine. You know, they're now in Texas. They probably die in Texas. They were. That's the best thing that ever happened to anybody. To be in Texas. And I would like to have my brother and my sister come here just to verify that the Wong family, who are a bunch of reprobates from Dansville, somehow we made it through. Somehow we lived outside of Dansville, and we're there can verify that we're going to have Rachel and her family, part of the Wamp family, and we'll all get along to where we're going to go. And, and we're hoping that everybody comes to Texas and visits us. Now, my sister's smarter than I am, you know, but the Wamps 
know everything. So what she's going to say, I don't know. Oh God! But she's going to say something. Welcome, Rachel. You're a very welcome addition. That's it. Congratulations. I got a little more to say than that. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Brother Paul and uh, Rachel. Again, uh, I I agree with what Mark and. and